Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is a review for your upcoming Unit 3 test, Modules 5, 6, and 7 in our Integrated Math uh, 3 class. So this is part one, you guys. This is going to be a two-parter, so we'll do the next part in the, on the next day. So here we go. So um, uh, we're going to use this graph to answer each. Okay, so write a function that matches this graph. Okay, this is an absolute value function, and since it's going upside down, then it's going to be negative. And right here is HK right there, okay? So remember, it goes opposite same right there. So, so our vertex right there. And then A is, is kind of like our slope. And look at our slope. It goes, um, it goes down 1 over 1. So our slope is negative 1 right there. So we just plug in HK and with a negative 1. Uh, so there's our answer right there. So, uh, okay. Easy enough. And then write the range in interval notation. Okay, well, the range is up and down movement. Okay, that's a Y answer. But in interval notation, that's using the parentheses and the brackets. Okay, so it goes down forever. So that means it starts at negative infinity. And then those are always parentheses right there next to negative infinity. Then comma all the way up to Y equals 3. So it's negative infinity to 3. And 3 has a bracket because we're including 3 right there. Okay. All right. So, so find the inverse of this guy. Okay. So the first thing we do is we sub in Y for the G of X. And then we switch the X and Y's, and now we solve for the new Y. Okay, so here I've got to add 7. So there's the new Y, and then we replace that with F inverse of X. That's what the F to the negative 1 means. F inverse of X equals that 3X plus 7. So there's the inverse. Okay, uh, write the equation of the form G of X equals AX minus H cubed plus K. Uh, that matches the graph. Okay, well, here's the parent graph. We did this um, uh, in module 5, uh, 3, I think, you guys. So uh, the parent graph goes over 1, up 1, over 2, up 8, because 2 to the third is uh, 8, and then um, over 1, down 1, and so because negative 1 to the third is negative 1, negative 2 to the third is negative 8. So here's our parent graph. Okay, so this was um, uh, HK, so 0, 0, it goes over 1, up 1. Here's our HK here, so 2 is going to go there, and then 1 is going to go there, and then this one goes over 1, up 3. That's what A is right there, okay? So A is that 3 because it goes over 1, up 3, and that gives us our equation right there, a piece of cake. I hope it's a piece of cake. I get uh, people complaining that I say it's a piece of cake, so sorry. All right, so write an equation of this form. Okay, so this is where we have a horizontal stretch. B is my horizontal stretch right there, okay? So again, here's HK, 1, negative 1 right there. So we know that part right there. And then our regular graph went over 1, up 1. This one goes over 4, up 1. So our horizontal stretch is uh, 4. So B is 4. So we just plug everything in, and there's our equation right there. Okay, does that ring a bell, you guys? All right, so let's sketch the graph of this polynomial function. Okay, well, this one has four X's, you guys. So um, when I was in my class, I'd hold my hands up like a touchdown, and I'd say it's a touchdown, and it has uh, three humps, probably three humps, because it's always one less than how many, what degree it is, how many X's there are. But this one's negative, so it's an upside-down touchdown sort of thing right there. So let's go ahead and graph that. The intercepts, we get the intercepts or the zeros uh, when we set each of those factors equal to zero. So there they are, x equals 4, 1, negative 1, negative 2. All right, and it's starting down here, and it's going to go up through that, probably not so far up, and then down, and then up, and then it's going to go back down. So just draw a general shape, something like that, okay? Typically, you guys, the closer the intercepts are, the less of a hump it goes up or down. So these guys are a little bit further apart, so it's a little bit further down than this one is up. And these guys are a little bit more further apart, so it goes up a little bit more, okay? All right, this one here, you guys, there's three X's. So it's a cubic function. Cubic functions kind of go, they start up here and go down here, or they start over here and go like this. Now this is negative, so think of a negative slope of a line. It's going down in that direction right there. Okay, so it's going from the top left up here down to the bottom right, and it probably has two humps right there. And 
and the zeros are it's going uh, across in the x-axis or it touches the x-axis when uh, those factors equal to zero so there they are right there and then since this is a double root then it's going to be tangent uh, to the to the x-axis right there so it's coming up here it's going to be tangent and go and then shoot off and then come back down this way okay so there it is something like that okay all right I uh, used the binomial theorem, and we did it by Pascal's triangle to expand 3x minus 2y cubed. Okay, so from Pascal's triangle, which is module 6, 3, uh, row 3 gave us 1, 3, 3, 1. So if you don't know how to do Pascal's triangle, go back uh, and look in section 6, 3, and it's about in the middle of the lesson when we started building that Pascal's triangle. So we're going to use those numbers to put in front of these guys. So it's going to be this one right here, and then it's going to be 3x to the 3 power. Now, all of these powers all add up to 3, okay? And it's in row 3 because of this 3 right here. Okay, so look, 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. This is 3. This is 3. So they're all 3s. And here's those 1, 3, 3, 1. And we put uh, the first one here with, to the third power, and then it decreases an exponent, and then you bring the next one into the picture right here. And remember, these got to add up to 3 right there. Okay, so then we decrease the 3x and increase the negative 2y. And then decrease the 3x, there would be 0 of them, and increase the ne negative 2y to the third right here. Okay, now we got to do all these exponents. 3 to the third is 27. 3 squared is 9. Okay, negative 2 to the first is negative 2. So this would be negative 2y. Okay, this is 3. This is 3. This is going to be a positive 4 because a negative 2 times negative 2 because it's squared is positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. So, so we do that right there, and then we multiply all the numbers. So this is 1 times 27. X to the third, this is going to be 3 times 9 is uh, 27 times a negative 2. That's going to be a, a negative 54 and so on. So we're just going to multiply all those numbers. 3 times 3 times 4 is 36. And then 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. So there's the answer right there. Okay. Now what you could do if you didn't know how to do that is, is write this 3 times and foil it out 3 times. 3x minus 2y times 3x minus 2y. Foil it out. And then multiply one more 3x minus 2y. You'll get the same answer, but uh, Pascal's triangle is a little bit easier. Let me delete this page. Now, sometimes I'm on a rental computer here, and sometimes it, uh, it, it creates an extra page. All right, so let's factor some, and then we'll stop after a couple of these here, you guys. So here's this right here. Okay, always um, look for a GCF. We can pull a 2 out. And then this one, I'm going to factor by grouping right here, okay? So I can pull an x squared out of this. I can pull a 6 out of these guys right here, okay? And then they both have the x uh, minus 5 in there, so we pull that out, and there it is right there. All right, one more, and then we'll stop after this. Okay, so this is a sum of cubes, you guys. A sum of cubes goes a binomial times a trinomial. And then we soap it, same sign, opposite sign, always positive, S-O-A-P, soap. So same sign as this, and this is the opposite sign, so this one's a minus, this one's always plus right here. Okay, and then what goes in the by are the things that are being cubed, the x and the 2. Okay, and then in the try, these bookends, I like to call them, this side is, is this one squared, so x squared. This side is this one squared, so 2 squared is 4. Okay, and then in the middle, we just multiply x times 2 is, is 2x right there. Okay, so there's our groovy answer. All right, there will be some more factoring in the next one. I just run out of time. Take care.